Oh my god. Okay, hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm Kayla. I'm Paige. This is Rainbows Those and Horror Movies. Horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, today we're talking about uh, found footage. Lots of found footage stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of stuff to talk about today, and I'm really excited about it. Yes, me too. Um, so the first thing is that this is officially our 20th episode. Woo! <laughs> sweet 20. That's not um, what it is. <laughs> sweet 20. So I only I only actually figured that out last night. I decided to go back and I and number all of our regular episodes that weren't mm. DDTKA or Watch Along Wednesdays and now the reads, right? Yes. And <laughs> so this is technically our 20th regular episode and our 10th episode was really our ninth episode so oh, whoops <laughs> <laughs> oh numbers it's fine numbers is good so i kind of wanted to do like a a part two celebration and i guess the last time we did a celebration episode it was our 10th and we did a vision board and i was thinking that maybe i know this is gonna ca- catch you off guard <laughs> But okay. um, adding or taking away some of our vision board stuff, like adding some of your own or taking away some that are pretty impossible now that you and I are um, not in the same state. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so do you like that idea? All right. Take a, <laughs> we'll take a gander at the vision board. So currently we have, currently we have, holy shit, it just went away. Oops. Damn notes. Okay, so we have uh, Overlook Film Festival. We have Portland Horror Film Fest. We have Scream Fest. We have Haunted Washington Road Trip and Haunted West Coast Road Trip. Both of those I'm thinking we can get rid of because it might be hard to arrange. <laughs> right. Um, and then 10,000 downloads. Maybe start planning some live shows and Halloween Horror Nights. I'm down for the so, live show life. <laughs> <laughs> you are... No, I am not. I am not. <laughs> not at all. Oh. <laughs> Just imagine them in their underwear. That would actually be more oh. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe don't um, do that. I still want to, though, because that's apparently just, you know, how you know you've made it, is if you start doing live shows. Hell yeah. So, can you think of any, besides the road trip ones, to get rid of? Not to get rid of, but I did see this list last minute and um, (laughs) I wanted to add two of them and maybe not. I mean, since we are in different states, maybe it is impossible to do like all of them together, but we are strong, independent women and could always (laughs) go alone or with friends. Um, So I did want to add two of them in my area. And just in case any of you all live in the Southwest or in Colorado, um, so there's the tele... Telluride Horror Film Fest in Telluride and the Mile High Horror Fest in Denver. I saw those. Um, I wanted to go to Overlook because it's in New Orleans. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, of course. <laughs> um, That's goals. Cool. Yeah. So, what about like not location based? What about like um, your dream director or a dream horror actor mm-hmm. wanting to be like on the podcast as a guest? Robert England. oh that's a really good one that's like legit vision board shit right and um i have two girls online who i absolutely love um deandra and another page and they are the um they host elm street radio which is a podcast and they're just really big into the elm street um fandom and page is directing a a movie right now that has to do with nightmare on elm street so i'd love to have them on the podcast one day Shout out to them, apparently. That's cool. Sassy Sledgehammer on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I I can't think of anything at the moment. Because, like I said, this was all very last minute. (laughs) But I I know that I... Okay, so extreme 
vision board for me would probably be um, James Wan. Mm -hmm. I love him. Yes. He's amazing. (laughs) That would be fun. Um, (laughs) Okay. So, 20th episode. Yay. Yay. Film festival tour, basically. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then some more guest actors to our vision board. I'll update everything on um, Patreon so you guys can get like an up close look at our physical vision board, which would be cool. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I need to shame myself a little bit. Shame. <laughs> shame. <laughs> Ding. Shame. shame. <laughs> um, we did decide to start doing our on air shout outs for our Patreons or patrons. Oh my God. Why do I have such a <laughs> hard time with that? <laughs> i mean it's close yeah but... <laughs> um we do okay so i said when they come in and our social media shout outs will be at the very first of the month because i don't want to have to deal with all that shit at once so we have d from voodoo teak and do you want to say the other one and harley he does not have any social media but thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you both so fucking much you are Amazing, and welcome to the cult. Yeah, thank you for fueling our fire. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's a bad thing. No, it's not. It's totally no. Wrong. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> and if you hear a cat screaming in the background, don't mind it. <laughs> it, yeah. Don't him. Don't. I mean, don't mind the screaming, but, you know, he just wants attention. All the yeah. attention. It's fine. We are very talkative and very annoying animals. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another thing monetarily wise is we're going to actually start doing monthly donations to, um, women in horror, the Adrian Shelley foundation and women in film. Basically it's all supporting women in film, but like Mm -hmm. different areas. Um, women in film is a general blanket of women in film. Uh, Adrian Shelley, they do a lot of grants for women in film and then um women in horror they actually uh they donate to that kind of stuff they really support women and they do their own film festival and every february is women in horror month so we will actually be doing an event for them in february which is a long way off i know but yeah um but yeah they're all really amazing women based (laughs) how many times can i say women Women. they're amazing yeah (laughs) so we're going to be donating 10 percent of all of our earnings every month and even though right now that's not a lot eventually that will be um what the fuck let me do this professionally (laughs) uh good luck luck. (laughs) my mind is gone right now so for example, if you do the um, Shutter free trial, you will basically be donating a dollar, and it costs nothing to you to sign up for the free trial. So you're basically donating a free dollar. So it's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> all those things um, from our shop, from Patreon, everything will ten percent of it will be going to that. So yeah. That's all of our news. Hooray. 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 Um, sorry for all the news, you guys. <laughs> there was a lot I mean, that happened this week. <laughs> I mean, it's all good news, so... Definitely. It works. Um, so why don't you do your TIO? Oh, what? I'm um, excited. Okay, yes. Um, let me just locate this. Okay, so um, as I said last week in the show, um, I went to Pride down here where I live, and um, it was really cool because around the park, they had these signs up um, that basically were, um, that told the history of LGBTQ happenings, and um, it told the story of Stonewall, and um, all of this cool... What's Stonewall? Um, Stonewall, so that was the first pride, but it was actually a riot, and it was um, oh God. led by a <laughs> um, a black transgender woman, so shout out to them. Um, but yeah, the first pride was not like the prides that we attend today. It wasn't. <laughs> it was more, yeah, it was a riot. It was like, hey, we're here, don't freaking oppress us. But 
Was it, we're here, we're queer? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so one of the signs I read um, had to do with the black triangle symbol. Um, and I actually didn't know this, so I really did learn it. Um, <laughs> so one of the oldest symbols associated um with LGBT community is the triangle. Um, and so this originated as one of the symbols used in uh, Hitler's Nazi concentration camps as a oh, way, to, yeah, as a way to label prisoners. So um, male homosexual prisoners were made to wear a pink triangle. And you've probably seen the pink triangle around. Um, and that's still a symbol for gay men today. Um, while women imprisoned for antisocial behavior, which included, oh <laughs> which included feminism, lesbianism, and prostitution, were made to wear black triangles. So there's not definitive evidence to prove that the black triangles were worn by lesbians in the same way that pink triangles were worn by gay men. But over time, the black triangle has evolved into one of the more prominent symbols of lesbianism, um, basically symbolizing defiance against repression and discrimination. And Hitler. <laughs> but, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, That's yeah. cool. Yeah, so um, so all the signs basically told about different symbols, but that was the one that stuck out to me. So yeah, black triangle life. Black triangle life. <laughs> uh, that's actually really interesting because I don't think I've ever. I don't. I I mean, bad shame on me, but I don't know. I don't think I paid attention to that community that much, and they're like signs and symbols. I've never seen the triangle being represented, but. I mean, it's something to look out for now. Have you seen the pink triangle before? No. Okay. <laughs> um, so another thing that one of the signs said was basically like, you know, back in the day, obviously it wasn't okay to just like say who you are out in public. Yeah. Um, so a way that we were able to find each other uh, was through these symbols. So it was kind of like a sneaky little thing. Like it wasn't something it was like Tinder. <laughs> right. So it wasn't something that was like on the mainstream, like all lesbians wear black triangles, but it was the ones that were like in the community and they knew about it. So that was another way just to like recognize each other. But now, you know, you can just wear a freaking rainbow cape and just be like, I am gay. And you won't get shot, which is awesome. <laughs> hey, straight which... people can wear a rainbow cape too. No, Thank I you mean, very whoever, <laughs> whoever wants to wear one can wear one. Um, but, you know, don't be surprised if I ask you out on a date. If, you... <laughs> if you're a straight girl wearing a rainbow cape. Um... <laughs> but yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh my god. My cat is stringer screaming. I know. She's I, I heard her. throwing a hissy fit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did? I did. <laughs> um, okay. And then mine is just super fucking strange. I actually found this like two or three weeks ago. Um, but basically this scientist, he was um, a doctor. He... He wished to scientifically determine if the soul had a weight and he used people who were in nursing homes and dying to prove this. Um, the example, so four were suffering for, from tuberculosis, one from diabetes and one from an unspecified causes. Um, this guy's name was Duncan McDougall. That's and a name. <laughs> He needed patients who were suffering from physical exhaustion because they needed to be still when they died. Mm. You know, imagine that. Right. Um, <laughs> he needed to accurately measure them. So uh, the patients looked like they were close to death. The entire bed was placed on an industrial sized scale that was sensitive within two tenths of an ounce. Um on the belief that human... Oh my god, this is the, like, the really fucked up part. So on the belief that humans have souls and am animals do not, McDougal oh, that's measured... Bullshit. But, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> McDougal measured the changes in weight from 15 dogs after death. McDougal said he wished to use dogs that were sick or dying for his experiment. Though unable to find any, it is therefore presumed that he poisoned healthy dogs. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Duncan. So <laughs> um, one of the patients lost weight but then put the weight back on and two of the other patients registered a 
loss of weight at death, but a few minutes later lost even more weight. One of the patients mm-hmm. lost three fourths of an ounce, which was 20, 21.3 grams, uh, coinciding with the time of death. Um, McDougal read, McDougal disregarded the result of any other patient on the ground. Oh, on the grounds that the scales were not finally adjusted. So basically, oh, and he reported that none of the dogs lost weight after death. So he said there might be proof that humans have souls. But then everyone was like, you only fucking tested like three people, really. And (laughs) that's not a big enough pool of people. So fuck you. And plus, like, it's obvious people have souls. But yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but oh yeah this was the snopes bit of it so i love snopes um an article in 2013 said the experiment an article by snopes said the experiment was flawed because the methods were uh used were suspect the sample size was much too small and the capability to measure weight changes too imprecisely concluding credence should not be given to the idea his experiments prove something let alone that they measured the weight of a soul is 21 grams. The fact that McDougal likely poisoned and killed 15 healthy dogs in an attempt to support his research has also been a source of criticism. No shit. Obviously. (laughs) Jesus. Oh my god. But it was an interesting thing. Yeah, right. McDougal. (laughs) McDougal. McDoofus. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Oh, boy. So, dead dogs. No. Lots of them. No. <laughs> um, so, I have a lot of entertainment stuff to talk about today because fucking San Diego Comic-Con and a bunch of stuff was released, bleh, was released from um, IFC. So, do you want to, like, go over yours real quick? Because <laughs> yours is, like, literally 15 pages long. No, just kidding. Just kidding. It's not... <laughs> Let me see here. Crap, I will. Oh, I got it. I got it. Sorry, computers. You got it. <laughs> computers, y'all. Um, so, Noon Entertainment. So, they're not a new band, but um, so it's a band called Golden Gardens, and they are from Seattle. And I've actually seen them a couple times. Um, so, dear listeners, um, I used to live in Seattle. I'm from there, born and raised, basically. Um, so,. I'm trying to find it in my freaking notes. Okay, here we go. So Golden Gardens, they <laughs> are an awesome kind of like, mm, ah, it's hard to, it's always hard to put music in a genre that isn't like cookie cutter in a genre. You know what I mean? Um, so they're, they're kind of like witchy, psychedelic rock, kind of dreamy. Um, so this is what it says on their Spotify bio. So, uh, um, our, our, words. Aubrey Bramble <laughs> and Greg Neville are Golden Gardens, a mystical Seattle duo up from the nocturnal underground, making music for ghosts and other shadowy Ooh. specters. Yeah, so I guess it started out as a duo, but they do have a full band when they play. Um, and all of their album art is really beautiful. It kind of reminds me of, like, they use a lot of tarot art and just a lot of, like, pagan based lyrics and stuff basically basically me in a band so yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> you are you in a band well that's true i make music as well <laughs> but they um yeah it'd be cool to collab hey golden gardens um golden gardens <laughs> yeah so you can find their music on spotify and i believe itunes as well awesome yes. that's really cool they actually sound like um what is that norel mr norel or something like they were like old um apothecaries that's what their their names sound like they were like victorian age aubrey bramble and greg neville apothecary i know right yeah they (laughs) they do kind of have like a victorian feel to them when they're live um just in the way they dress um she dresses like this beautiful like forest witch and um yeah it's really cool awesome yeah I I'm always looking for new bands. I'm excited. Yes. I will look them up. And I'll probably most likely um <clears throat> every episode for what's new in entertainment, I'll probably do a band just because you watch way more media than I do. Um and I probably listen to more music, so I think we can help each other out. 
<laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Mine yeah. actually, my main one today is actually just like an artist, artist, like paint and shit artist. Mm-hmm. Um, paint but shit I did artist. watch <laughs> <laughs> physical painting, doodling artist. So, but the movies, um, the glass trailer as of right now, it is seven twenty one on Friday, and the glass trailer just came out like an hour ago. Mm-hmm. And it's really fucking good. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. And oh my god. So something else that came out of all this news from San Diego Comic Con. Apparently, Joss Whedon is shopping and pitching for a Buffy reboot. No. Yeah. No. Why? <laughs> oh my god. It's not even fucking 20 years old, is it? I mean, oh. it might be 20 years old, but it doesn't no, matter. I think it. I think it ended in 2007, okay. so it's 10 Jesus years old. Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, yeah. so it's a supposed reboot to like, or a remake? It's kind of like a reboot, remake, spinoff is how he was promoting it. Like, it's no. going to be, they want to have it be like a Black Buffy, which, fine. It's fine, but, but like, why not make another show? I I don't know, man. Maybe. Why does it have to be Buffy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know but i got so mad i was just like i'm putting this in the notes i have to bitch about it moving on so we bitched Ugh. about it moving on <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else we can say i literally it's literally everything just says he's shopping it around this summer well, I hope and there nobody, will most likely <laughs> i hope nobody buys it <laughs> i mean fox will probably buy it <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so IFC, um, I've talked about this a few times, I think, on the air. I'm not sure. I know I've mentioned it to you, but I saw Ghost Stories, finally. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really creepy, but it's definitely, for me, a one and done. Mm-hmm. I really don't think I'll ever watch it again, because yeah. I know the ending. It's one of those kinds of movies. Yeah. Um... But the acting was amazing. It's got uh, Martin Freeman, and he plays a really awesome, creepy character. Uh, Another, this one actually pertains to the theme today called Devil's Doorway. And it's an Irish found footage film um, about demonic possession. And the whole movie is from the filmmaker. So, like, the guy holding the camera. Mm -hmm. Um, It's all from his perspective. So... The interesting thing about it is that it was based in, based in the 60s. So the fucking, it's so hard to explain, but the edges are cropped and they have like a weird, um, not sharp edge. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like old film. And it's, so it kind of really gets you into the mood of, hang on really quick. Sorry. Her cat's being a dick. Did you just, like, yeet her out the door? <laughs> I just, like, flung. Just, like, yeah. <laughs> threw her. Um, but, yeah. So, okay. Uh, it had interesting scares. And that's about the only thing that I could give it. Um, all the scares were very cliche. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were mostly made by camera issues and, like, movements. So, yeah. it was, like... You could really see it coming. But that's kind of like the IFC update. But right now, both of those are available to rent and buy on uh, iTunes. So if you want to check them out, do that. And um, my main entertainment thing, media, whatever the fuck this segment is called. Um, <laughs> Things we like. Uh, Things we like. Alex Pardy. Pardy? I don't remember. P-A-R-D-E-E. Okay. Whatever, however you say it. Pardy. Pardy. I don't know. He, <laughs> he did um, Chatham from The Used. Remember that blockhead character? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then this also ties into today's theme. He actually created the characters... Um, for a movie called Digging Up the Marrow. I'm not sure if I've talked about this on the podcast. But I don't think so. It's a found footage film by Adam Green, who did Hatchet. Okay. Nice. And the creatures are so creepy. But they're 
really beautiful and they are all they're all strange like i don't obviously they're creatures and they're like really unique uh, creatures but he um i don't even know how to explain it it's one of those hard it's it's hard to explain art on a podcast apparently it's a visual thing (laughs) exactly but you should go look it up does he have a website yeah, Alex Parody. He's all over Twitter and right now, oh, and Instagram, obviously. But um, right now, he's at San Diego Comic Con, and apparently there was a shit incident. Like, like he's poop? <laughs> yes, poop. Oh. someone oh. pooped like right in the walkway outside of his um, what are they called booths? Jesus and... Christ! Yeah, <laughs> it was really gross, but um. I love his art so fucking much. It's yeah, so it's great. inspiring. And then um, eventually I want to get a P.O. box for us so that you guys can send us pretty things. Some cool. And we'll send and, you shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'll start before we get a P.O. box. But well, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> um, but he has his logo and everyone knows. I don't know if everyone knows. But people who know me know that I love a good logo. And his logo is this... Um, rainbow with like teeth like really sharp monster teeth attached to it nice and it's really cool someone did a a special effects makeup of the logo and it was really creepy Ooh, that's awesome yeah i'm excited but i'm gonna buy all the shit alex party (sighs) you ready 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 (laughs) (laughs) gonna say that every time Shudder is a premium streaming service devoted exclusively to horror and thrillers. They have thousands of hours of killer content, including Shudder Originals. They also have really awesome curated collections, so if you like demons or witches or ghosts, there's definitely a collection for you. My favorite collections are A Woman's Touch and The Foundations of Horror. Mine are A Comedy of Terrors and Haunted Habitations. So go check out Shudder.com and use the code RAINBOW for your 30-day free trial. That's Shudder.com. Use the promo code RAINBOW for your 30-day free trial. Hey, Kayla. Yes, Paige? Did you know that Stephen King reads and listens to approximately 70 books per year? Unlike me, who can barely get through one. (laughs) Well, for whatever reading level you're at, you can find the perfect book for you at Audible. Head to audibletrial.com slash R-A-H-M podcast to get a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial. And if you're looking for recommendations, I suggest The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, a classic. And the one book I've actually managed to read was 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. (laughs) That's audibletrial.com slash R-A-H-M podcast. Go get your free audiobook and free 30-day trial. Bitch. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, holy shit, you guys. I'm sorry, but like the cat is looking at a cat that's actually outside. Ooh. Uh, what is going on there's an outside cat right outside the window so there might be some like screaming there might be some fights <laughs> yeah fights <laughs> through the window <laughs> sorry i'm just like this is free entertainment yeah right if if anything happens you should just scream finish her i should <laughs> yes <laughs> so to kick off our theme are we are we ready for the theme, by the way? Found footage, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> to kick off the theme, I found this really cool um, breakdown of found footage film genre on the found foundfootagecritic.com. And it's pretty lengthy, so I'll bullet notes it. Uh, so it starts out with what are found footage films? Uh, found footage films are feature length movies, shorts, or web series designed to have the look and feel of actual nonfiction filmed events that were lost and subsequently discovered and made available to the viewer. For instance, no, for a film to be considered as found footage. Kids. <laughs> Both of our cats are on one tonight. I know they're fucking assholes today. Um, <laughs> All of the cameras used to shoot the footage must be... So, okay. The way... Is it he? Yeah. (laughs) The way he's meowing right now is the way that Dahlia brings me her baby 
Just but like, like three times louder. Yeah, mm-hmm. like sobbing, screaming, howling. Oh my god. Fuck. <laughs> um, all the cameras used to shoot the footage must have known the sources within the film, i.e. all the cameras effectively are props in the film. Based on detailed analysis of 500 found footage film conducted by the found footage critic, uh, it was determined that films within the genre historically employ a combination of one of the mo- of one or more of the following cinematic approaches: first person perspective, which is film recorded from the perspective of the main character who is experiencing the event while holding the camera, mm-hmm. mockumentary, film recorded in the form of interviews and investigative reporting of the event. My favorite. Uh, yeah, that one's really good. <laughs> news footage style. Footage from a person's news crew investigating the event. I actually like that one, too. Mm-hmm. Um, surveillance footage style. Uh, footage from a stereo... Stereo? <laughs> footage from a stationary camera automatically filming recording the events, a.k.a. paranormal activity. So narrative film is... A narrative is a feature... F- Feature-length movie, short or web series, compromised primarily of footage captured from off-stage slash set camera sources. Um, the cameras used to shoot a narrative film are not considered as part of the universe in which the film is being shot. Um, narrative films are what make up a vast majority of all feature-length films. Let's see. Most of them are limited budget. I think that... Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh... <laughs> It says here that um, found footage films usually have a budget of five hundred to fifteen thousand, while the typical Hollywood backed feature length film has anywhere between five million and fifty million. <laughs> Fuck. So, That's so much money <laughs> for movies. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So to make things a little bit more um, real, they usually have unknown casting, like not famous actors right. or like maybe not even B-list actors, just like brand new or like stage actors. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes you think that this is, oh, this is some random person being filmed and getting killed by a ghost. <laughs> so right. <laughs> <laughs> um, another con- another commonality amongst most found footage films is the relatively small cast. Mm-hmm. Um same like that's all that i can think of is all pretty small yeah except for like the background characters like the main characters like five people max oh yeah Mm -hmm. um limited set locations so like one city one town one one house building yeah Yeah. (laughs) uh an outline script so very scripted but improv you can yeah, very much improv. And then camera and filming, one word budget. Most found fi- found footage films are not shot with state-of-the-art equipment, commonplace to the typical Hollywood feature film. So they yeah. buy stuff from <laughs> Staples and they film a movie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> not yeah. really, but, but it's you know, not. They could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, the um, did you see Unsane yet? Not yet. That one is interesting because you you heard that he filmed it completely on an iPhone. Yeah. It's 100% on an iPhone. So it's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Besides the other budgetary cutbacks, there's usually not a soundtrack. There's sound effects, but not music. Uh, Same with special effects. They're usually um, very minimal, Mm -hmm. very fleeting uh off center blurs they're distantly shot poor lighting obviously um cgi is actually rarely used in found footage they usually use practical effects yeah so all of that there's a bunch of it so found it on find it on foundfootagecritic.com but the conclusion of this is found footage films are a very different breed of film than the traditional narrative shot films where no we are all familiar with one would think that all the factors described above are limitations that lower their quality and effectiveness in actuality this author would argue the opposite low budget any inexperienced director inexperienced cast real locations and consumer filming equipment are all necessary ingredients to make the brilliant 
found footage film. So basically everything I just listed is why people either love found footage mm-hmm. or hate it. Right. It's I'm true. personally in the love it. <laughs> me me too. Yeah. I think they're really interesting. Ba-ba-da-da. Oh, unfriended. <laughs> unfriended. Mm-hmm. Unfriended. So we both watched uh or unfriended. The first one. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to go see the second one, but oops, I didn't. And that's the way. (laughs) It's only been out for like a few days, but shame. (laughs) I think, yeah, when this comes out, it'll be out for a few days. But right now it's been out for less than 24 hours. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Then, yeah, you're fine. We're fine. Um... But so so what did you think of Unfriended in the in the method that they did where it was all through Skype, I think? Yeah, it was all through Skype and Facebook and um, Messenger and stuff like that. I thought it was really cool. Um, and I actually watched that movie on my laptop. So I think. Oh, it, no. It, <laughs> yeah. So I think it kind of added to the effect. Yeah. Um, of it, but I thought that was super cool. And like their webcams and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was really interesting. So this one got a really high praise, Mm -hmm. which is pretty obvious. I think that the acting was done really well. I think that um, they picked the right actors. Like Mm -hmm. they really got into the like, fuck you, bitch. You're really mean kind of thing. I'm not entirely sure what the second one is about. I've seen all the trailers and I've read like the wiki and stuff like that, but I I'm not 100% sure if it's supernatural like the first one is. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think it must be. It looks like it. Maybe. But I don't know. <laughs> it also looks like it could be not because it's it's all about the these like literally the dark web people actually coming and killing these people. Ooh, yeah. So I'm not sure. But I really liked it. I I don't know if I like it nearly as much as I like the other types of found footage. Mm -hmm. Um, It was just kind of limited to where they could film, if that makes sense, just because like they they were on their computers the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. So it was just basically like switching back and forth from like person to person and stuff like that. But um, with other found footage films, you're able to actually like go places um, yeah. Is that kind of what you mean? It, it um, more stationary with Unfriended? Like, yeah. You, I didn't get kind of... bored at all, but it was a lot of, like, reading as well, like, the messages and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How did Which you do with watching that while you were cleaning your house? <laughs> oh, I, I actually didn't. I, I was like, nah, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person that has to actually, like, watch a movie. I can't, like, be doing other things. So oh. <laughs> I just, like, put my laptop on my body and was like, I'm ready. <laughs> um i think so there's a movie coming out um i don't know if it's recently or will be but with john cho who's from like harold and kumar Mm -hmm. and the exorcist tv show okay he is doing one where he it's very similar where the whole movie is through emails and through facebook and um he's trying to find his daughter who went missing Okay. And so it has like, it even has, I think it has like Deborah Messing from Will and oh, Grace. Interesting. <laughs> um, so it's a big cast and they're yeah. all doing it through webcams. They actually said that um, the whole movie was filmed on webcams. And that's Ooh, really interesting. That is cool. Um, but the death scenes in Unfriended were freaking gnarly though. Jesus. They're so brutal. Oh my God. Like, I, I think I did have a nightmare after I watched that. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, because the death scenes were really unnerving, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. The um, I don't know. Spoiler alert. The Has fucking, it been out that uh, long? I don't know. Uh, the curling iron. We'll just say that. We'll just say <laughs> death by curling iron. And like, as a cosmetologist, that really hit close oh, no. to home. Because I've I've straight up grabbed the barrel of a curling iron before. With my hand. I didn't mean Ew. to. I didn't mean to. I wasn't oh my God. <laughs> I wasn't looking. But like <laughs> that that's pretty intense pain, so I could only imagine how it would feel other places. Oh. I don't like it. You know, see if we say that it, other places, people well, are gonna get the wrong idea. <laughs> I mean you have to watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um so yours is a classic. Let's start with yours. 
All right. So, of course, we couldn't do a found footage film without talking about the Blair Witch Project. Ba, ba, ba. Duh. <laughs> um, so the Blair Witch. Okay, so during this podcast, Kayla, we're I'm gonna you're gonna hear this so much, like this was one of the movies I watched really early on in my life. And <laughs> <laughs> the sh- that shaped the way that Paige is. <laughs> it really is. And like my mom isn't isn't necessarily like a fan of horror, but for some reason, like she was always watching these movies when I was younger and like my mom and dad were super excited when Blair Witch came out. And I remember, so I wasn't, I was not very old when this movie came out. So it came out in 99, but I definitely remember it clear as day. And I remember, I remember the marketing, the marketing. Yeah. And, um, this movie came out at a really interesting time in history too, because not only was it one of the first found footage films ever, I mean, it was the first one to go big for sure. I'll talk about the first, yeah. the first, the very first one in a moment. Um, but this is one of the first found footage films to make it big. Um, they worked with a budget less than $25,000 and they raked in over $248 million. Fuck. Like talk Holy about shit. talk about profit. Um, yeah, the actors were paid a thousand dollars a day, and it was shot in eight days. Um, but um, one of the actors said that he's grossed in over three hundred thousand dollars in general <laughs> from the movie, like the sales and stuff. Um, wow. But as I was saying, this movie came out at a really interesting time because this was when the internet. So nineteen ninety nine. This was when the internet was kind of like first getting its roots, I guess, in society. And so a lot of people didn't really know if it was real. Um, because, yeah. <laughs> because there's so, like, with the internet and stuff like that, like, there's so much that can go on. And even my mom, like, because I asked her, I was like, so is this real? Because it does really look real. Um, compared to other found footage films, uh, it's a bit shakier. Um, but, you know, whatever. I don't really care about, like... That the sh- was the shakiness of the cameras, but it looked fucking real. And my mom was like, yeah, I think it is. And I was like, they can't just like put a movie in theaters where people actually die, though. Like, even as a seven year old, I was like, mom, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. But that was the thing that a lot of people. So when you say to someone, do you like found footage? And they're like, oh, like Blair Witch. And I'm like, sure you like usually yes, they but... go no because i hate it it makes me dizzy it makes me nauseous and i'm like okay right. that was literally like the first one kind of technically and yeah and give they, it another chance and they really did want to make it look like it was real um yeah whereas the other found footage films that are out there you know they still do look like found footage but it's it's a lot more put together i think than blair witch and as we're saying this is the first this is really the first one to, yeah. to to make it into theaters and whatnot and um as you were saying this one um the script was very much just like outlined but it was mostly improv like oh, you totally said, emotion based like you said um yeah to make the story seem real um so the audition process for this movie um so yeah it's funny because like I, I didn't um read the article that kayla just read but now that I'm putting things together, I'm like, oh, you know, that is like the formula for um, yeah. <laughs> for found footage. Um, so, so the audition process for Blair Witch um, it says actress Heather, oh God, Donahue, Donahue, yeah, remembers <laughs> reading an ad in backstage that said. An imp- improvised feature film shot in a wooded location. It is going to be hell, and most of you reading this probably shouldn't come. Oh no! <laughs> so that's oh my like, god! <laughs> yeah, so that's like how they got their actors. Um, and so, in order to test the improvisational skills of the candidates, as soon as each potential actor entered the rooms to audition, um, they were immediately told by one of the directors. You've been in jail for the last nine years. We're the parole board. Why should we let you go? Go. And if the actor hesitated for even a moment, the directors concluded the audition. So basically, you had to be super quick on your feet. Um, and like I said, they were paid a thousand dollars a day, which honestly isn't bad. Um, but no, they, not ninety nine, right? Um, and they they were fed um, 
a ration of bananas and protein bars <laughs> oh, when, when they were out on the when they were out in the woods. So I think that might be to make it more um, to to really like put them into the Blair Witch universe, you know. Um, so oh yeah. So I don't think they were like leaving between sets to like go to their trailer and like order dominoes and stuff like that. Like <laughs> they were um, <laughs> they were really made to feel like they were camping um, or like fucking what is his name bear gorillas bear or gorillas something. one of bear gorillas bear gorillas. <laughs> drinking his own pee <laughs> yeah well because apparently one of the i don't know if it was him but one of those like nature survivors he was actually caught like literally walking down the street to a mcdonald's oh, when he was oh, supposed yeah. to be like eating yeah. bugs <laughs> i know fucking bear like come on like <laughs> oops been out in the woods for two hours better drink my own piss Um, but yeah luckily bear grills wasn't in this movie because the actors were obviously more hardcore than he is um yeah (laughs) so another fun fact about this is the teeth in the twigs were actually human teeth ew yeah actual human teeth um so they were supplied by the director's dentist and um the hair in the twigs was also josh's real hair um so so they did make they did hand make obviously all of those like you know weird twig figures that were in the trees and um and all of that so with their low budget but um yeah real teeth i didn't know that that's gross (laughs) (laughs) well that's like the um fucking poltergeist they use real humans yeah that's true (laughs) um Oh, the actors in this movie had a safe word if they wanted to break character and talk. Um, and that safe word is taco. <laughs> okay. I like that. <laughs> it's I, a positive note for everybody. That is a good... <laughs> taco! That's a good thing. That's a good safe word. Let's see. Oh, shooting finished on Halloween night, October 31st, 1997. Um, so, so let's see here. Doo-doo-doo. Um, it concluded on Halloween as the actors were taken out for their very first hearty meal in over a week. Williams described oh emerging from the woods and seeing people in costumes as very surreal. Well, fuck yeah. Like, you've been in the woods shooting Blair Witch, and then the moment you exit the woods, it's Halloween. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> that's a damn trip right there. Yeah. Um, They shot 19 hours of footage that was edited down to 90 minutes. So, Holy fuck. So they really did. Um, they were in character for a long time. <laughs> that's yeah. A, that's a lot. Um, oh, number 13 on this list. A lot of people really thought the three actors were actually dead. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. The fucking, like, whoever, was it the first guy who went missing? His mom contacted the production company or something and they're like, yeah. is he dead? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it says oh my God. Uh, Donahue, Heather Donahue's mother, even received sympathy cards. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, yeah. Some moviegoers got physically ill because of the shaky camera work. So some people puked and asked for a refund. Well, you better <laughs> take some frickin' Dramamine. Um, yeah. <laughs> And um, only Josh is still a full-time actor. So only one of the dudes went on to act um, huh. out of this whole thing. The other ones maybe acted in a couple like short movies, but they never acted again. Um, I remember, yeah, I remember seeing Heather in a couple of things, but nothing contemporary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the woods where they shot in Maryland... Um, they've dealt with a lot of vandalism and creepy fans. Um, (laughs) so... (laughs) Fucking creepy fans. (laughs) I know. So kind of like in the, the remake of Blair Witch, like, they, um, I thought that movie was pretty interesting. We were only going to that, because I know you don't like it, but... Um, <laughs> I don't like what the 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 remake of Blair Witch. Uh oh, you mean the sequel? No, not Blair Witch Two. Um, that one was trash. No, the one that they just came out with like three years ago. Uh huh. That was a sequel. Sequel, yeah. Sequel, yeah. Twenty years later, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, because it was her brother. Mm hmm. Yeah, but <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool that um that they had quote unquote fans. 
of the Blair Witch story. And so I can only imagine that's kind of like how that area is in real life. You know, the, yeah. the people that live around, they're like, hey, you want to go in the woods? Like, <laughs> this is where Blair Witch was filmed. Like, that would be creepy as hell. And if that house is yeah. still there, oh. <laughs> yeah, the house at the very end, no. <laughs> I'm sure that's been vandaled at least oh, a few absolutely. times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are my fun facts for the movie. Fun facts. Yeah. And again, one of the first ones that shaped me as a human. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take that oh my as goodness. well uh did you talk about the first one? Oh yes the first one so um in my research for this i was like is um you know is blair witch the very first found film footage movie <laughs> um the answer is no um so there was a, a film that came out 10 years before um before the Blair Witch in the 80s. Um, so it's called the McPherson Tape, a.k.a. UFO Abduction. And, ooh. and yeah, so I, I haven't seen this film, um, but everything I read about it, of course, like, obviously, it was kind of, I don't, I don't want to say trash because I haven't seen it, but like people are like, well, obviously it wasn't very good. Um, I think their budget was 5000 Um but well, I, in the eighties, that was about was a, the same. Actually, not too too bad. Um, but apparently, there's a really like cheesy UFO at the end that I kind of want to oh, see. God. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like bad movies sometimes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, fun fact: UFO abduction was actually the first found footage movie. That's really cool. Yeah. And hey, we all have our guilty pleasures for bad films absolutely absolutely (laughs) no shame (laughs) no shame whatsoever um okay and i don't do you know where you can find blair witch for download Ooh, i don't know for sure for download is it on shutter i it's not on shutter i looked (laughs) um probably amazon probably amazon i think think it's on stars unless i'm mistaken it doesn't matter go find it download it buy a dvd like it's if, good. if you haven't seen it yet like <laughs> yeah yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> oh okay i will say i will say for blair witch that um i have a hard time with it now oh. um i've seen it like a like i said a bazillion times yeah but i have a really hard time just like watching it in the background because I don't know what happened to me, but <laughs> a lot of things. At one point, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> uh, at one point, I started watching a lot more horror, and the more I started watching a lot of horror, the movies like Blair Witch and stuff like that they really get to me, and my anxiety mm-hmm. is such that um, when there's a lot of noise, uh-huh. so like in my house. When I'm watching a movie, when I hear the street noise outside, when I hear Flynn talking in his office, I have to shut one of them out. Oh. And the hardest thing for me to shut out is the street noise. And I want to keep watching my movie, so Flynn usually ends up <laughs> the short end of the stick. Right. <laughs> um, and so when I watch something like Blair Witch, there's a lot of noise. Mm-hmm. And there's it's not really easy to focus on anything. Um I do notice that when there's just, like, a lot of things happening, it really gets to me. I used to really like the movie, but for some reason, I don't know. Hmm. I It's not one of my favorites anymore. I used to love it, and I will still watch it every year. Yeah. And it's still a Halloween staple for me, but it's hard for me to watch. Just, like, physically hard? Like, anxiety kind yeah. of? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the movie isn't scary for me anymore i mean it used to terrify me oh yeah me. of course like the blood on the but, rock i was like oh my god oh god <laughs> it was so scary oh yeah it was of course but yeah mm-hmm. so i like it i really like blair, blair witch but i think that everyone should see it yeah i mean it was just, like it's the og 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 yeah found footage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um so mine mine is hell house llc Woo. And that one, so I actually found it 
<laughs> I've talked about uh, Shockwaves before, but I found this movie on Amazon Prime. Right now it's on Prime and it's also on Shudder. You know, plug. Plug in that plug. <laughs> Code Rainbow. Code Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> 30 day free trial. trial. <laughs> but seriously, you guys, it's freaking awesome. Like we have it now. It's super cool. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> <Yeah. clears throat> but I found mm-hmm. it on Amazon and it scared the fucking tits off me. I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Your tits are gone. I, I like just, she's not happening away. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they ran away. <laughs> they but... joined the circus. I <laughs> Um, I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting... So, my experience with found footage is that it's either really good or really bad. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the same with you. Yeah. I haven't really seen too many that I didn't like, but yeah. Okay. Side note. Have you seen um Above... As Above, So Below? No, but I freaking need to because I love the name. Uh, okay. Oh, no? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unpopular opinion time. Uh, I fucking hated that movie. Oh. I really hated it. A lot of people love it. So it's one of those, like, do with it what you will. Mm-hmm. But I see it come up in conversation on, like, um the Shockwaves Facebook group so much. And... I'm sitting here like, it's such a bad movie, but a lot of people who hate found footage love this movie. It's so weird. I'll I don't have know. to watch it then. Give a, yeah. give another opinion. <laughs> um, so Hell House. It's yes. really scary. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was really good. So basically the general synopsis is these people are, um, they're in charge of building a haunts for Halloween. Haunted like house. haunted houses. Yeah. Um, in the biz, they're called haunts. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they go to this really old fucking house and they find all this motel. creepy shit. Oh, it is a motel. You're right. You are correct. Um, and Makes it, it looks creepier. like people just like, right? Creepier. Um, Abandoned hotel. It looks like they just up and left. Yeah. Yeah. Like things uh, were just left. And they, at the same time, you're watching this, like, current footage of this news crew, like we talked about earlier, Mm -hmm. uh, news crew being part of found footage. And they are interviewing a a woman who has been there, who looks totally fucking freaked out. And then she hands over this giant bag of all these tapes of what happened on the night that all this apparent shit happened. And so you see, so you see it from the perspective of mostly the filmmaker, Mm -hmm. the guy recording and like documenting everything. Yeah. And I don't even know. I don't even know what else to say. Cause then basically all, all hell breaks loose after they fucking decide to stay there. Oh my God. So, so basically they get there in August and obviously Halloween is in October. Um, so they're there the whole time and these motherfuckers decide to sleep at the hotel. Like Not even ev- a little bit. <laughs> like even after creepy shit starts to happen. No, like the first thing that would happen, I'm like, okay, we're out. Like, fuck the money. Like, yeah. <laughs> fuck this. That's it's not worth so it. so creepy. No. Oh my God. That... The first moment, I think this moment is in the trailer, so spoiler alert if not, but the clown, when mm-hmm. he first looks down the, um, into the basement. Oh, yeah. That, no, like, like, if I look down in a basement and see anything, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> like, even a big spider, I'm like, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, bye. Bye. <laughs> like, this is your house, not mine. Um, but yeah, no, clowns, no. <laughs> not even, no. Um. I don't know what else to say about it. It's okay. So a lot of the complaints that a lot of people have to say about it is that, um, it's fine towards in the beginning, but the last half gets really nauseating. And I don't know if you Uh, noticed that. It didn't bother me. Um, that's just what a lot of people say. This is what their biggest negative, but like, okay. So back to shockwaves, I I watched it and literally the next day I listened to their episode and (laughs) 
fucking Rebecca McKendry, who's the female on the show, she was like, you guys have to watch Hell House and all the kind of stuff. And then as soon as I listened to the episode, I, I tweeted at her mm-hmm. and she was like, this is so cool. I'm so happy. And then everyone, fuck, like, I felt like famous for a second. Like everyone started retweeting my tweet and I was like, yay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> but, um, so she really recommends it. It's apparently shockwave. Oh. Did I say Shudder or Shockwave? You said Shockwaves. Did I? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have pod- Shudder on the brain. The podcast. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so that one's a really solid one. It gets yeah. it gets really a little bit nauseating at the end, but other but than that, it's a really But that's just because crazy, crazy shit test. happens. Yeah. Exactly. And you wouldn't be holding a camera still if, like, a demon ghost was after you. No. I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I really loved um, it. It had a great twist at the end as well. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I wasn't I expecting it. you to like it. Why? I I don't know. It For some reason, I thought that you were in the group of not liking found footage. Oh, no, I like it a and- lot. <laughs> you don't know. She doesn't know me at all. <laughs> hey, hey, like what? Ten years of d- of distance. We're getting back into things. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one that I wanted to like side mention is Grave Encounters, and that's mm-hmm. a staple. Um, for any found footage. So if you're looking to find your perfect movie of found footage, go for Grave Encounters. It's um, so good. That that is also on Shutter, and. <laughs> And that I one actually had a oh what sorry no 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 sorry. I just got what? excited um <laughs> they play off the whole like ghost hunters vibe yeah. like like the TV paranormal kind of shows on sci-fi and shit that's basically what it is but then actual creepy shit starts to happen so <laughs> and it's yeah. in an asylum right. Or a hospital? Uh, yes, like in a, a sane asylum hospital thing, yeah. basically. Yeah. I mean, perfect <laughs> was, setting for disaster. I actually, yeah, I really liked the, um, there was so many mind fucks in that movie that really got to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all mm-hmm. I'll really say. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> yeah. You can't really talk about it much except that it plays off of the ghost hunter kind of thing. And uh, yeah. it's it gets it gets real. <laughs> Shit gets real. Shit gets real, yeah. So, yeah, all the movies that we've talked about, uh, let's count them. We have talked about Blair Glass, Witch. Blair Witch, uh, Ghost Stories, Devil's Doorway, uh, <laughs> Digging Up the Marrow, and Hell House, and Unfriended, One and Two, and Grave Encounters. We talked about a lot of movies today. <laughs> so, like, seven to nine? <laughs> I know, let's count. <laughs> Um, I feel like there was another one, though. Wasn't there? Um, no. Hell House. Unfriended no, you're one, right. Unfriended 2, Hell's House, uh, Grave Encounters, Blair Witch, McPherson. The U- the first one. UFO abduction that I'm going yeah. to find somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably on YouTube. I Yeah. Those things are always there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's our found footage. Let us know if you guys like found footage. I love found footage. Me too. I I actually okay okay another side story. <laughs> what do you actually think about uh, paranormal activity? Because that's another one that a lot of people are like, oh, you mean like paranormal activity? Uh, and I'm like, right, sure. <laughs> it's um. So let me preface this by saying I saw all of them in theaters. Um, so did I. Okay, so I. I don't know how I would like it if I just saw it at home. Um, but in theaters, you know, you were, you are immersed in it. Mm-hmm. And, um, something that I like about those movies is that it's not really what you see that scares you. It's more the anticipation of things or it's more mm-hmm. just like subtle details that you really have to look at. Um, I thought, I thought it was pretty cool. Like I, I thought the first one, was pretty groundbreaking, especially since it was just an indie film that um, years later ended up in theaters. So I thought that was cool. Um, was that how that happened? Yeah, so it was an indie film 
And I want to say it, it made like the indie circuits and stuff. Um, but I don't know how many years later, like five ish, I want to say, don't quote me, but, um, quite a few years later, it finally ended up in, um, in theaters. So good for them. I mean, they, they also started with a super low budget as well and then grossed a lot of money. Um, I don't know if any of the sequels had anything to do with the original creator though. Because I feel like the sequels got really fucking up their own ass a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I I actually, my favorite one is the second one. Okay, yeah, that one was good. And then I just remember, I know, like, one with, like, kids and, like, witches or that something. That was the, so the first one was the original, like, Katie and yeah. Micah, Mika. Me. And then the second one was the, at the same time, parallel timeline of her sister yeah. and her husband. And then the third one was the back in time to see the Katie and her sister as kids. That's and the then one. the fourth one, yeah, the fourth one was ugh, awful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I saw it, actually. I that don't think one, I saw it. But I think that one's called like Ghost Dimension. But then there was the spinoff one, the um, the one based in Ventura, California, with the Hispanic lead kid. Oh, didn't see that one yet. Oh wait, was it called something else? I think it was. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. But that was like a spinoff. It was technically it was technically the fourth one, but then they didn't market it in the same like timeline i don't know Mm -hmm. it was weird but i actually i actually really enjoy the second one i think it just has a lot more depth yeah that's just me Mm -hmm. um i don't know just go fucking watch found footage films we all love them Mm -hmm. this is probably the i don't i was thinking about it because like a lot of these episodes that we can do we can like break it up Right, we can talk about three different episodes full of psychological thrillers, but yeah. once we talked about found footage, we've pretty much talked about found footage. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. Um, if you guys have any found footage films that you would like to recommend, please let us know. Yeah, tweet that at we us, haven't talked most about. Likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I also love um, quarantine. Let's just say that um quarantine what was the other one that i was gonna do the Cloverfield? bay oh the bay the bay no i'm gonna do cloverfield for the big beastie monster oh yes episode yes. we're doing um beastie the monster bay, <laughs> <laughs> that one is uh definitely news crew it's all news crew okay i haven't seen that one yet yeah it's still it's still on our plex you can watch it cool um so just reiterating some of the stuff i said a little bit earlier where um I'm I'm gonna rethank Dee and Harley for being our <laughs> Patreon <laughs> because I suck. <laughs> I yeah <laughs> yeah. I was I like, know. wait, aren't we gonna mention Dee and Harley? And she, yeah. And she's like, no, we're gonna wait. And then she's like, oh fuck, we really should have. <laughs> oh, we should have. Sorry, you guys. Maybe I'll send you guys a sticker. So, okay. um. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and then we're going to start download not downloading. Oh my god. We're going <laughs> to... Words. <laughs> Words are not working today. Uh, Donating. We're going to do a monthly donation. Every month we're going to donate 10% of our earnings. Then that is going to Women in Horror, uh, the Adrian Shelley Foundation, and Women in Film. So if you want, you can just like go donate to those causes, but if you like want to go through us you just buy stuff from our shop um sign up for the free affiliate stuff so like all the 30-day free trial shit we're talking about that is like a free donation that you're doing so it literally costs you nothing sign up free trial Mm -hmm. yeah you don't even have to pay anything free movies come on free free movies free uh audiobook (laughs) so much promotion in this episode (laughs) But but really, I mean, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to download it or I, I mean sign up. Um, but it benefits some really great causes. So Exactly. Yeah. Um anything else? I think that's it. Twentieth episode. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All 
I'm excited. Holy shit. I was actually counting them up. I think I think in total we have uh I don't know, I wasn't when when counting them up. It's like there's a counter on our pod bean. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, there's <laughs> we a have counter. like twenty eight episodes. <laughs> yeah. Twenty eight. Uh we have twenty eight episodes in total, I think. So but twenty regular ones, so that's really exciting. It is. <sighs> Sorry if this was like super low key today, you guys. I'm tired. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> yeah it won't be this way next time i promise it's just been like really busy um so real exits go to our website rainbowsandhorrormovies.com you can contact us on there or via our email at rainbowsandhorrormovies at gmail.com uh if you want to start donations and all that kind of stuff you can find the um patreon and shop and affiliate links all on our website under the like join the cult and then the extras tab Mm -hmm. and then find us on social media rahm podcast i am at the k dub and page is at floral coffin um send your ratings and reviews and comments our way so that we can be found easier yes yep 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 please (laughs) <laughs> please. please we love you all <laughs> we love you long time love you long no time. i'm not keeping that in. <laughs> for five dollar sucky sucky oh god <laughs> you want to keep that in too <laughs> oh my god we're so amazing today anyways yes. <laughs> you want to take us out all right guys stay strange and unusual bye, bye. <laughs> we did it We did it, number 20.